Hi folks, welcome back to the lab, where today we're having a look at my 3D printer, which lives here on the floor because I've run out of desk space. I chose this particular model because I wanted to be able to get on straight on and start printing parts without having to spend hours printing upgrades for the printer itself and dicking around, calibrating and tuning it before it would actually be usable. Um, now I think this model can be that, uh, if you get a good one. This particular one, not so much. Uh, when it turned up, all of the connections on the power supply inside the base were loose. You could pull the crimps out with your fingers. Uh, and as a result, the hot end temperature sensor and all the limit switches didn't work. Uh, so it's completely useless, you know, wouldn't home. It's quite alarming when it ran into the ends and uh, tried to start jumping teeth on the belts. Made quite a big, a bit of a nasty noise. Um, and also to a you know, slightly lesser problem, in that I haven't fixed it yet. Um, the base height is not consistent. It's okay in this sort of horizontal swathe across the middle, but as you get fully to the front and back of bed travel, it falls away from the print head uh, by as much as 0.3, maybe even 0.4 of a millimetre, which has a, a pretty serious effect on print quality. Um, the base itself is flat. I've had a straight edge on that. Um, so I think it's more that the rails that it moves on aren't straight. Now they've sent me some new ones and um, you know maybe I'll swap those out but I think it's more likely that the rails are being bowed by these stanchions uh, that they're applying a force onto the rail and bending it out of shape uh, because otherwise I don't think it's very likely that two round rails are both bowed upwards perfectly in the middle. So I'm gonna see if I can sort that out without having to completely take it to bits um, just by sort of levering on these a bit and the other thing is it needs a new hot end cooling fan which they sent me one of but still very early life failure on that one um, so we'll tear into it and see what we find first thing to do is take some measurements so that I can see that any adjustments I make actually make an improvement Now I'm going to loosen the grub screws that hold the, the rails into the, into the stands um, and I'm going to slide them out of each end in turn. Um, firstly I might even expect them to raise up at the other end if they're being forced into the air at each end. Um, then I might be able to simply point the rail back at the centre of the other, other holder. Um, but if not, um, at least it will give me a bit of uh, visibility on how much I'm trying to bend this because uh, I can look at how much the other end of the rail moves, measure it again um, and then yeah, adjust accordingly. I'll make sure I do the same both sides. Well, there's definitely load on those but it's it's actually backwards to what I expected. The, the bed came up in the middle but these are being forced downwards at this end for absolute sure, that's much more, I've got the bed right at the front and that's much more than the weight of the bed that those are being held down by. So I'm going to try and straighten these up with a spanner on the front ones and see if I can't get some of that load off and then I'll, I'll repeat with the other ends. So, after a first round of tweaks, I'll do a bit more measurement and see if that's made any improvement, or maybe if it's made it worse. Well, it's different. This is the new side here. Uh, and the deviation is in fact less, but I've gone too far. Um, previously it was 0.2 higher in the middle, and now it's 0.12 lower. Uh, this is distance from you know, top to bottom, so if uh, a lower measurement here is closer to the print head. Uh, so yeah, now a bit low in the middle, so I guess I'll just uh, tweak that back 
kind of in the way it was before. Right. After a lot of dicking around, I think I've got this about as good as it's ever going to get now. Uh, it's a real mind bender to um, to adjust because everything affects everything else. So it's not a crown in the rails that makes it higher in the middle. It's the angle of the ends of the rails. So if this end of the rail is pointing down, then when the table's at this end, it drops the far end of the table. And the same at the back. If the, if the rail is pointing downwards as it comes out of the stanchion, then it moves this side of the table down when the table's at the back. So you need, obviously, the main thing that we need is for the rails to be straight, but given that we have to adjust these by hand with a big lever, um, firstly, it's easier to leave them in, just slacken the grub screws. Don't bother moving the rails. Um, the second thing you have to do, if you're going to do any do this by measurement from the print head, then what you have to do is make sure that with the table in the middle as a starting point, and you probably have to do this a few times, is make sure that the measurement from the table down to the rail, this, I'm not actually accurately measuring this now, this measurement here is the same front and back for each rail. Um, so adjust your bed height and go back and forth a few times. It doesn't matter too much side to side because you can tram that out later. But the point is, fore and back has to be the same measured down from there. And it's quite difficult to measure because this is quite flexible. So you have to kind of make sure you're measuring the same downward pressure on your caliper each time. Um, so get these same front and back, and then you can do your measurements like this from the top of the, well, from any surface you like, but I'm using it from the top of the print head down to the table and I'm doing it over the rail on each side. So once you're measuring like that, you can move the, take the bed around. So I'm gonna line this up like that, using that screw as a reference point as well. Hold that square. Now you want the table in the middle of its travel, so because this is further forward than the middle, it's gonna be a bit off center on the table. You want the table in the middle of the travel, measure it, and then table, yeah, it's sort of, if you catch just the front edge of this here, then you want a bigger gap at the back. What I'm doing is I'm going about an inch past with you know, the table, about an inch past the end of the rail each way and measure. And I've got one corner that's a bit low. I think maybe the, there's just a slight bit of out of flatness in the table, it, in the bed itself. Um, but I've now got it that for 95% of the surface of this, it's all even to within 0.05-ish, uh, which is a hell of a lot better than it was before. Of course, once you've done all this, it's going to have completely changed any bed alignment you did before. So, uh, yeah, you're going to have to rehome and uh, re-level with the adjusters. I'm going to do a first pass leveling uh, with this cold and then I'm going to come back around later when it's preheated but just to say burning myself this time around uh, I'm going to try and aim for 0.08 um, but because I've got my nice 0.05 per tooth uh, wheels and I'll put the link to the shape file down in the uh, comments um, I can you know, come back and raise the whole bed and I'll lower it later when it's hot but yeah, just to get a, a first point of reference. Right, let's assume we're done with the bed for now and change this hot end fan. Right, uh, I'm just going to print nine pieces of the same thing in the extremes of the 
at the bed um, and then compare how well they're, they're stuck down to check out the first first layer height. Uh, I'll only let it do a couple of layers because uh, I can't be asked waiting an hour for this but um, yeah, we'll see if it's made any difference to the parts that get printed near the front and the back. Okay, so I forgot all about it and uh, left it to print while I went off to make some food. And now I have nine Raspberry Pi wide angle camera mounts that I don't need. But uh, never mind, only a few grams of filament wasted. Let's get these off and uh, I'll have a look at their flat undersides. This base, incidentally, is as far as I can tell magic. Uh, I've seen all these people having to dick around with masking tape and yeah, whatever. This just works. This silicon carbon carbon silicon carbon is, yeah, as, as, far, as I say, as far as I'm concerned, it's magic. Okay, so they're generally more consistent than I would have got before. Um, as was before, that this strip of three across the middle would have all been spot on but the ones at the back and the ones at the front would have been trash. Um, so sort of, I think, six of the nine are pretty good, and three of them are what I consider perfect. Three are fine, um, and then three are not so good. And annoyingly, it's not in any nice pattern. Uh, the front right and the back left two are the ones that are not so great. And if you don't know if you can really see that, but you you haven't got proper fusion on the filament on that. The same with these ones back here. These ones aren't too bad. That one, the front right's the worst. And then yeah, some of these are. I mean, that's that's perfect. That's what I'm looking for. Nice, no gaps. And these ones in the middle. Yeah, that's fine. So I might have another go around at um, trying to get this trammed in better. But it does occur to me that there's really no reason for these to be mounted so stiffly. Um, the rod itself is, is stiff enough to not, to not bend. Um, and all this really needs is to be carried on one point and make sure all the four points are level. Um, so I might have a talk with my long-suffering tame machinist about making a piece that will go on the front here. They'll hold them both facing the same way, but not actually apply any, any torque. I mean, I'll maybe make a couple of extra mounting holes um, and allow it to, to pivot on those, really, and allow the rod to set its, its own position. Uh, another interesting uh, change might be, this is the one of these, one of these plates here. On the right hand side it has two uh, linear bearings and on the left it only has one. Um, if I can get an exact replica, unfortunately it didn't send me um, a replacement, if I can get an exact perfect replica of the linear bearing I think it would be good to upgrade the left hand side uh, to have two on it as well because there's definitely a difference in how easy it is to tune this left to right and if it's only got one, it's going to have you know, less stability anyway. On the other hand, the ones that get nearer to the end of the rods uh, are going to be you know, more susceptible to the, the twist in the end of the rod if there is any. So, in summary, stay tuned. Uh, I'll probably do some upgrades. Uh, click like and subscribe and come back and see me when those are done. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.